Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. My name is Elijah, aka Hajio Saunang, aka Nerd Lost Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American released live action video game film adaptation. And I was looking forward to this review as I remember seeing this one in theaters upon its release. So without further delay, today we review 2001's Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Pids, you ready to jump into this one? Ciao! Let's do this! Well, let's see if there's any treasures worth plundering from this one then. Now, for the games at the time, when Laura Croft Tomb Raider was released into theaters, it was June 15th, 2001. Looks like this one was intended to be a summer blockbuster, but we're going to be the judge of that. Any hoosers, at this time, six games had been released in the series. Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, Tomb Raider 3, Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, Tomb Raider for Game Boy Color, and Tomb Raider Chronicles. I think it's fair to use all of these for comparison, as they cover a wide array of globe-trotting Tomb Raiding adventures, and the movie does not heavily take directly from the plot of any one of these games. Now as for the plot, within the games, it typically involved Laura traveling around the world in an attempt to discover some ancient artifact or artifacts. Uh, these travels and searches are either initiated by her own personal interest or due to her having been hired by someone. The artifacts always have legends surrounding them, telling of the great power they provide to the wielder of them. Lara usually will be betrayed by the person who hired her as they're seeking that power from the artifacts so that they can rule the world. Uh, she'll run into someone she knows and was friends with, but be betrayed by them in some way, and or along the way while adventuring on her own, she'll run into an antagonist who is seeking the artifact to obtain its power. Now, generally, there is some combination of these plot points involved. In the film, we basically get the combination method of these plot points. Uh, Lara discovers a clock hidden away in her mansion by her father. She takes it to an old friend of her father's who claims to not recognize it, but refers her to a person who may be able to identify it. That eventually ends up being revealed as our main antagonist. Along the way, she runs into an old friend and fellow Tomb Raider that ends up siding with, an, with the antagonist and betraying Lara. And this antagonist here wants the clock because it will help them to locate an ancient artifact that will give the wielder, of course, incredible power. Off we then go globe trotting in search of the artifact with Lara, of the antagonist, and her old friend at odds. I can't really argue with the plot here as it fits within the mold of the games, so this gets a hoo for me. Heads, what did you think about the plot? Oh, woo! Setting and world representation. Now the games give us multiple settings, such as the Croft Mansion, Peru, Greece, Egypt, China, Tibet, and other world destinations along her globetrotting adventures. We get to see her explore caves and tombs, and of course frequently see her in her, in her iconic outfit with her dual pistols, while displaying her fantastic archaeological, acrobatic, and marksman skills. And the film here doesn't disappoint. We see Croft Manor, Cambodia, Siberia, and Venice. We see Lara use her vast archaeological knowledge, acrobatic skills, and deadly accurate marksmanship. I'm hard pressed to find something to complain about here, and I have to give the setting and world representation a woo. Pids, how did you feel about it? A woo! Now for our characters here, let's focus on the main characters. Up front, most of these are either original to the movie or liberties were taken with them when adapting them for the film. Let's start with Lord Richard Croft. In the games at this time, he's the father of Lara and a wealthy British aristocrat. His first name was also Henchingly and not Richard, though later games would adopt the name from the film. Furthermore, in the games, unlike the movie, he is alive along with his wife and not dead. The film makes him out to also be an explorer and Tomb Raider much like Lara and unlike in the games. I don't think the limited screen time or performance from John Voight here can save this character since they were so drastically altered, so I've got to give this character a chip futter. Pids, what are your thoughts on Lord Croft? Him's a chip futter. Bryce, an original character for the movie and played by Noah Taylor of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Game of Thrones fame. He's Lara's technical assistant that handles things like construction of her training robots and maintaining the manor security systems. Noel puts on a good performance here, and he definitely comes off as the tech head he's supposed to be. I think he fits well into the universe here, and I can definitely give him a hoo here. It's your opinion of Bryce. hoo Hillary. Now in the games, the Crofts had a butler named Winston, 
who was a decorated World War II veteran skilled in combat. Here, the butler's played by Chris Berry, known most notably for his role in the BBC series Red Dwarf. They changed the name of the butler to Hillary for some reason though, yet we do see instances of him being very competent in combat, which alludes to him having some sort of background training and experience. And in spite of the name change, I enjoy this performance and can give this character a hoo-woo as well. Pids, your feelings on him. Hoo-woo! Alex West, another original character created for this film. He's a fellow Tomb Raider and old associate of Lara's that seems to share a bit of a tense past between each other romantically. Uh, this character is played by none other than future James Bond actor Daniel Craig. The performance is strong and he comes off as a competent Tomb Raider, second only to Lara. The dynamic between him and Lara always seems to flow well and he provides a nice contrast to her presence and abilities, along with some constant tension in regard to whether he will continue to betray Lara or not. Straight up hoo-woo here from me. Pids, do you like Alex? Hoo-woo! Manfred Powell, our final original character created for the film that we're going to be covering. Played by Ian Glenn of the Resident Evil films and Game of Thrones fame, he is the main antagonist in search of the same relic that Laura is. Here he is very believable as the untrustworthy, immoral, and power-hungry Powell. The performance is very strong and believable, and this character fits in well with the stereotypical Tomb Raider plot mold. Again, another easy hawoo for me. Hids, did you like Powell? Hawoo! Lara Croft. Played by Angelina Jolie, she is Lara Croft. Just look at the visual comparison here. It's spot on. From the ponytail to the outfit right down to her trademark dual pistols, we also get plenty of her acrobatic skills displayed, as well as her archaeological and combat skills shown in full force. The portrayal is excellent with a wonderful mix of the intelligent yet cocky take-no-nonsense Lara that we know from the games. Perfect casting here, as she gets the utmost ho from me. Pids, ho -woo. All right, so final verdict from us. While there are some liberties taken here and there, as well as some original characters added, I think this film really exudes the Tomb Raider spirit. The overall representation from the globe-trotting, puzzle-solving, combat, and performances fits really well and feels mostly natural. Uh, let's see what the Pids thinks of this film. Hoo-woo! The bestest so far! I absolutely agree, Pids. I think this is the bestest one we have watched so far. Though there are some liberties here and there that bring it down just a bit, I can easily give this one an 8 out of 10 -Z. This is a very solid adaptation that is action-packed and entertaining through to the end. I highly recommend that if you haven't watched this one, you should check it out. As always, I want to thank you all again for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. Again, my name is Elijah, aka Haji Osaunet, aka Nerd Lust Daddy, reminding you all to not be chit fuckers to each other. Body autonomy for all, reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Kids, bye bye everyone. <laughs>